Hi, this is Steve, K8BZ, and this video is made for the operators who are going to be participating in the Packet Radio Emergency Communications Exercise. It's going to be held on September 21st at 7.30 p.m. Uh, the exercise will be on 145.09 simplex uh, packet frequency using the West Branch uh, Aries Racy's packet station bulletin board station WBADOC-1 and I want to go over some things that you will need to do uh, before the exercise begins and we're going to do those in Outpost Packet Message Manager. All of the messages are going to be sent and received using Packet Message Manager and not the uh, dumb terminal program IP serial. Uh, we're going to take advantage of the automated features in Outpost PMM uh, so we won't have to do much manually at all. Uh, now before the uh, exercise begins on the 21st, the exercise actually starts at 7.30. Uh, but at 7 o'clock I'm going to upload a bulletin to the bulletin board. And all participants should connect to the bulletin board using Outpost Packet Message Manager and download the bulletin. Uh, there will be some instructions in that bulletin that you'll need in order to set up Outpost before the exercise begins at 7.30. And I'll demonstrate what to do and explain it as we go. Uh, first, you will need to make sure that you have the correct bulletin board selected. If you go to the Setup menu in Outpost PMM and select the BBS option, or you can do the shortcut Control-B to bring up the bulletin board setup window, make sure you have the correct bulletin board selected. Now you may have several bulletin boards configured and saved in this pick list. I named the bulletin board that we'll be using, I named it Ogama Aries Racy's bulletin board. Now you may have named that something else in your program, but you just need to make sure that the connect name is WB8EOC-1. Uh, and if you have that, you're all set in the bulletin board setup. Now you need to go to your identification setup you probably don't have this tactical, uh, use tactical callbacks selected, but if you do, you need to unselect that so it will use your FCC assigned call sign to connect to the bulletin board. And uh, once you have done that, then you will be ready to download uh, the bulletin. And we're going to do a send receive session now to get that bulletin. And it will go through the uh, list sequence for listing mine, listing traffic, and finally listing bulletins. There's the list bulletin request. There's our bulletin. So we're going to read the bulletin now, or Outpost will read it, and save it to your inbox. Uh, that chime you just heard was the uh, uh, the new message reception chime that's generated by Outpost automatically. Now we're going to look at the inbox. Here's our uh, here's our bulletin. Uh, there'll be a bulletin similar to this that I'll, that I'll upload at seven o'clock, the day of the exercise. So you need to open this bulletin and read it. Make sure you read the whole bulletin. Uh, there, there will be some special instructions in it. Uh, the first part of this bulletin says after you get Outpost configured, send a message to tactical call sign IC for incident command and advise the fictitious uh, logistics section chief, Miss Lotta Goodstuff, that you're in operation and in service. The main part of this bulletin is to let the participants know what their tactical calls and slot times are for this exercise. So uh, in my case, I'm K8BZ. My tactical call sign that I'm going to use for the exercise is SysOp. My slot times, or the times that I'm going to program Outpost to connect to the bulletin board to send and receive my messages, will be at 0 minutes after the hour and 30 minutes after the hour. Now each station that's participating is going to have their own tactical call sign, and they're going to have their own slot times 
twice per hour that they're going to configure Outpost to connect to the bulletin board and send and receive their messages. Uh, we're not going to use our FCC assigned call signs for the exercise. We're going to use tactical call signs. Uh, the rest of this gives you some information, some reminders. We want to make sure your PC clock is set to within 30 seconds of the correct local time. Uh, check your system clock and compare it with a time standard. Make sure it's within 30 seconds of the correct time. Uh, that's very important. If your time clock is off, Outpost will not connect to the bulletin board at the correct time and you're probably going to interfere with something someone else whose time it is to connect to the bulletin board. And if that happens a couple of times, you're going to slow down the whole exercise by about a half hour each time that happens, believe it or not. Uh, we also want to set Outpost to delete our messages after we download them. And that's explained here. I'm going to describe how to do that in the setup options. This number three is very important. Do not access the bulletin board when, is, when it is not your slot time. We're not going to do any message sending manually. We're going to do it all automated with Outpost. We're not going to send any messages directly to other stations. They're all going to go to the bulletin board. And we're going to retrieve all messages from the bulletin board. If you engage in packet activity outside of your slot time, you're going to interfere with the operation. Uh, and slow everything down. So make sure that uh, you understand that you're not to do any manual connections. Let Outpost do them when you, when you program your slot times. Also, there's going to be some independent uh, operation. Independently, you should originate two short messages for each of your slot times. In other words, every half hour originate two messages and just pick two, two of the tactical calls at random. Uh, try to send messages to each of the tactical calls and just send them a short message and you can just make up some content. How are you? How are things going? What's your status? Something short and simple that they can receive and respond to just for a little extra activity and practice during the exercise. So once you've downloaded this message, sometime within a half an hour before the start of the exercise, print this message out so you'll have these tactical call signs and you'll have your slot times to program Outpost. So after you have that, we're going to close this and then we're going to go into Outpost into the setup menu and we're going to program our tactical call sign now. We're going to go back into the identification section then we're going to go down here to the Use Tactical Call Sign for All BBS Interactions. We're going to click that, and then over here we're going to type in our tactical call sign. In my case, it's SysOp. And then we're going to click OK. Now, if once you put in the changes, don't just click this X. The changes won't be saved. You either have to click Apply or OK to save the changes. Okay, after that we have to go into the Tools menu and the first item on the list is the Send Receive settings. And this is where we set up our slot times. Your Send Receive settings window is probably going to look like this. You're probably going to have no automation selected. There's two other options. The second option is Schedule Send Receive Sessions automatically every X number of minutes. And you put in the number of minutes when you want. We're not going to use that option either. We're going to use this option for scheduling slot times. Schedule send and receive sessions at X minutes past the hour. And you can use 0 through 59. In my case, mine is 0 minutes after the hour and 30 minutes after the hour. So at, at the top of every hour and at 30 minutes after every hour, my outpost program is going to connect to the bulletin board send any outgoing messages that are in my out tray and retrieve any messages for me that are on the bulletin board. Now that's in the automation tab. Let's move over to the retrieving tab. This is where you uh, tell Outpost what types of messages you want to retrieve. And we want to retrieve these first three types. Private messages, national traffic system messages, and new bulletins. Uh, we don't need anything else checked in this tab. In the Receiving tab, this is probably how yours will look. Uh, you may or may not have a chime tone selected here. This is the tone that 
is played whenever you receive a new message off the bulletin board just to alert you that you have a new message coming in. If you don't have a tone, a wave tone selected there, click the browse button and it will take you to the directory where the tones are stored in Outpost. And you can select a tone. Uh, I'm using, uh, well, let's see, which one am I using? I don't remember. I'm using the packet wave. So down in this list, the tone I have selected is, uh, well, it's not really on there. Let's, let's try this chimes wave. Then you can click test, see how it sounds. <clears throat> you can pick the uh, pick the one that you prefer. It's no big deal there, but just have some uh, alert to alert you when a message comes in. This next box here is very important. This is checked, and it says keep messages on the BBS. Do not delete after retrieving. We do not want to do that, so we're going to uncheck that. We want to delete messages off the bulletin board after they're retrieved. If we leave the messages on the bulletin board, by the end of the exercise, there could be 50 or 60 messages on that bulletin board that will all list every time you connect to the bulletin board. And you don't need to be listing 30 to 50 messages that you already received and waste all that time in your five minutes of slot time that you have to get in and out of the bulletin board to send and receive your messages. If you uncheck this box, every time you download a message for you, Outpost will automatically delete that message from the bulletin board. There's no point in keeping those messages on the bulletin board after you've uh, downloaded them. So those are the three tabs that we have to do. And once that's done, you can click OK, and we're good to go there. Now, the next thing we need to do, you could very likely have several messages stored in these various folders in Outpost. In your archive tray, draft messages, deleted messages. Uh, most of mine are in the archive tray. Now we want to get rid of those. We want to start the exercise with no messages in Outpost at all. So to get rid of those, we don't need to delete them all one at a time. Go up to the File menu and go down here to Delete All Messages. Now if you do it, they're going to be gone forever. If there are messages on there that you wanted to save, you can save them and then reload them in later on. So if you want to save your messages, go up to the Export uh, option in the File menu and Export All Folders. And you can give it a file name if you want, or you can just keep the default name. And you can save that, and it will save all of your messages that you had. After you've saved them all, now let's go in and delete them so we can get rid of all of the messages in Outpost and start with an empty Outpost program. All of these tabs are now empty. In tray, out tray, sent messages, they're all empty. Then after the exercise, if you want to restore it to the way it was before, go back here to Import and select the file where you saved all your messages. And it will put all your messages back in Outpost the same way they were before the exercise started. If you don't care about that, don't bother doing it. Just go ahead and delete all the messages and make sure you start with an empty Outpost program. Okay, so we're all good to go. We're all set up. If we do all of that, we'll be ready when the exercise starts at 7.30. Now at 7.30, each of the stations will take turns on an automated basis connecting to the bulletin board and uploading and downloading their messages. Uh, if your first slot time doesn't come up for 10 or 15 minutes, you can go ahead and work on generating messages for the other stations. If you want to make a new message, just go up here and click New. Then you need to tell it whether you want to send a private message or a bulletin message. A private message is from station to station from you to some other individual station. A bulletin is from you to all stations. If you send it as a bulletin, all stations will read the message. Don't bother doing anything with national traffic system messages in this exercise. We're not going to do that in this exercise. So let's say uh, I'm the SysOp and I want to send something to Incident Command. I'm going to put Incident Command or their tactical call IC in the To field. I'll put some type of subject here for the subject of the message. And then down here, I'm going to put the message. How 
are you how are you I have a broken arm that's why I'm not going to be very elaborate on these messages I'm typing with my left hand now when I click send that message now goes to the out tray it's not sent over the air just because I clicked send it will only send when my program slot time comes up and then Outpost will connect to the bulletin board and send that message and retrieve any messages for me. So while you're waiting for your slot time, you can go ahead and generate a few of these simple messages to send to the, some of the other stations. Now when I go to the in-tray, I've got quite a list of messages here. Uh, and we're just going to look at some of these messages to help you deal with some of this during the exercise. Let's take a look at one of the messages. I'm going to open the first message. Uh, this is a message from the SysOp to all stations. It's a bulletin. It says bulletin message up here, so we know that all stations received this message. And this is saying all stations send a status report to the EOC once per hour advising the following. Yes or no, you have commercial power. Yes or no, you have adequate MREs on hand, and so forth. Then there's an area to describe other situations that you need. Now, you don't need to start a brand new message to the EOC and then keep referring back to this message to figure out what to send. Let's just forward this message by clicking the forward button and it opens a message window where we can send this message to the EOC and just like an email does if you forward an email it's going to have the, the original message content here. So all I need to do is use my mouse. I can, I can leave that in if I want, or I can just highlight it and push the delete key and delete it just to clean it up. Then I can go down here and I can delete the options that don't apply. Uh, for example, we, yes, we are on commercial power, so I'm going to delete no. Uh, then I'm going to go down here and say no, we don't have adequate MREs on hand. Uh, and you can just continue and modify this message by just deleting the parts that don't apply. You can clean it up and uh, rearrange the columns. You can go down here and describe any other issues or needs that you have. Put the cursor down there and just type it in. Um, Okay, so that makes it pretty easy. When you're all done, don't save it. Click Send. If you save it, it'll just stay in your draft folder and it won't be transmitted. So click Send so it will go to your out tray and send the next time you have a Send Receive session. Let's go back to the in tray and look at some more of these messages. Uh, this is the, the same tactical call and slot time message that we saw earlier. A lot of these messages are going to have information arranged in columns. If your message window isn't large enough, it's going to mess up how these columns display and make it very difficult, if not impossible, to understand the message. So if the message looks all jumbled up like that, increase the size of the message window and you'll be able to uh, see the layout of the message where it will make sense. These two buttons up here, the small a and the large a, change the font size. You can decrease the font size by clicking the small a. You can increase the font size by clicking the large a. These arrow keys will move you through the message folder if there's more than one message in the folder. The down arrow takes you to the next message and so on. The up arrow takes you to the previous message. Okay, now let's take a look at this message. This is a message from the SysOp to the EOC. It says, send a message to the shelter and request a drug requirement list uh, for the shelter residents. So the EOC is going to send the shelter a message and say, and tell them, send me your drug list. Okay, now the, the uh, shelter is already going to have a message that has the drug list in it. Let's find it. Let's be down further. Here it is. 
Okay, so the shelter is going to get this message and they're just going to, it's not telling them to do anything with it. They just have the message, so they're going to save it. They might put it in the archive folder. And then they're going to get a request from the EOC saying, uh, what, what are your needs for drugs for the people in the shelter? Uh, well, they're going to go to this message. They won't need to create one, a fictitious list. They have a list there. All they need to do is forward this list by clicking the forward button to the EOC. Okay, so if you're asked to do something, take a look and see if uh, you already have a message there that can, uh, that can help you keep from having to type out a long message or just make something up out of your head in order to have a response. Now there'll be some messages here that it's going to clearly say, create your own message. Uh, draft and send a lunch order for the EOC staff to the logistics section chief at incident command. And this is create your own message. So you, you don't have a message there that you can just uh, forward. So whenever possible, I've tried to give you the uh, heads up there that you have a message that you can use that you can just forward. Okay, so that, that should help you throughout the uh, course of the exercise in dealing with this. Now, the way this is going to work is uh, you'll be getting messages in every slot time when you connect to the bulletin board. There will be instructions on some of the messages, and some of them is just going to be information that you don't have to do anything with except save. But if you have some instructions, after your five-minute slot time, that gives you 25 minutes to work on your instructions before your next slot time. So you can do get whatever messages or responses you need to get them ready in that period of time. And if you do that and have time left over, then create a couple of messages on your own for some of the other uh, uh, participants in the exercise. And then when you click send, they'll go to your out tray. When your slot time comes up, those will all send and receive. Okay, so now we've gone through the entire exercise and the exercise is over. There's a couple of things we need to do. There's some housekeeping things. The first thing we want to do is export all of the messages in all folders to a file. So we're going to go to this file menu to export, and we're going to export all folders. Now let's put this one on the desktop where we can find it, because I'm going to want you to email this file to me in an email attachment. So for the file name, use your tactical call sign, S-Y-S. OP in my case and then I'm going to save that and that's going to save all of the messages in every folder to a single file on the desktop and in this case it's called sysop so then send me an email to k8bz at arrl.net and attach that file uh, so we can uh, myself and uh, probably some other people will work with me to do an evaluation on the exercise and send a report to the Section Emergency Coordinator. So that's one thing we're going to do afterwards. There's still one other thing that we need to do. We need to go over here to the Forms menu and we're going to generate an ICS 309 communications log for the exercise. So we're going to click on that option in the Forms menu. And then we need to select a date range for the communications log. What this is going to do, it's going to list all the messages you handled, who they were from, who they were to, and the date and time that you handled them. Now, all we need to do, we don't need to select dates. We can just say, use the current date, because the exercise is all going to happen on the same day. So we'll capture all the messages. Uh, so just select today's date, and then click Build Data Set. And then you will see a fairly long list of messages will show up in this window. Now, if you can click print, and it will print a printed copy of a, of a nice uh, ICS uh, 309 communications log form on your printer. But I want you to do an electronic copy that you can email to me. So you do that from the file menu. And we're going to save that as a CSV, as a .csv file. So we're going to click that. Uh, we'll go ahead and save this on the desktop also. And this one again, use your tactical call sign. S-Y-S-O-P for the file name. We're going to click Save. 
we're going to get a little arrow, error window that pops up that says you're missing some fields. Do you, do you still want to do this report with some missing fields? The two missing fields are these two yellow ones. Uh, we're not going to worry about assigning a task number and a task name to this exercise. So don't worry about that. If you want to fill those in, that's okay too. You can do that. So we're going to click yes, and then it generates a CSV file. This is a this is a, just a version of that file in in a text editor. Uh, it's probably yeah, it's, it is. It's in Notepad, uh, but it also generates another file on the desktop and I'll show you that one right here. I'm going to open that file this uh, screen recorder program causes uh, causes things to run a little slow sometimes now I'm just going to expand this first column here. That way we can see the date. So this is what that um, that communications log form looks like in a database program. Uh, it gives the date and times, who the messages were for, uh, wh where they were sent and the subject line of the message. So that's the communications log. So what I can do when I get all of these is I can save everyone's communications log in a separate tab on this form so I can get them all in one form so we can do an assessment of the exercise and send a report. And we'll probably send these uh, uh, files also to the section emergency coordinator so he can see how we did on the exercise. Uh, so if you do that, save those two files for me and email them to me. Uh, that will help a great deal. And with that, we will meet on the day before the exercise on the West Branch Repeater at 8.30. So that's going to be September 20th at 8.30 p.m. on the West Branch Repeater. And as you go through this video, make notes. Uh, if you have any questions or problems, just make notes of those and we will address those uh, when we get together on the 20th, uh, the day before the exercise at 8.30. And then remember, go back, uh, go back to uh, packet on the day of the exercise and sometime in the 30 minutes before the exercise, download the bulletin, set your tactical call and your uh, slot times as described here. And if you have any trouble with that, uh, you can try to give me a call on, uh, on the West Branch repeater and maybe we can uh, talk you through it. Uh, but I, I think you'll be able to figure it out uh, if you refer back to this video and, uh, and maybe, even, maybe even practice it once or twice before the exercise uh, so you'll be good to go the day of the exercise. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the exercise.